Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. We are in the cottage garden once more and today we're working on a project I've teased a little bit in our last two videos. We're going to be moving a couple of sizable bridal veil spireas to a new home on the property. You can, might be able to see my dad behind me prepping the area. These bridal veil spireas were planted around the time the cottage was built, 2010, 2011-ish. Uh, and they honestly were probably not spaced the best way and we want to give them more space to fully be able to develop into the habit that bridal veil spirea are known for. They get their name because they have these beautiful clusters of white flowers with arching stems that look like a bridal veil. Um, these get four to eight feet tall and wide and we're going to be spacing them out in their new location at eight feet. That they might end up touching, things tend to get a little bit bigger here than they're advertised to. So we're okay if they form into a hedge. We just want to get as much of those beautiful arching stems as we can. So let me show you where we're going to be putting them and where they are and then we're going to dive into getting them moved. We are down along the property line. Now last night and I didn't film this, my dad and I got a string and strung up the property line. You can see the remnants of the spring, string right here but it basically comes and actually this this birdhouse is about 18 inches in so it comes to about here and then it goes all the way down. So these are actually our neighbor's docks, which haven't gone back in for the year. They'll do that a little bit later. Uh, and the, that wood pile is basically on the property. We sided these out, as I said, eight feet apart so that they could grow into each other a little bit, but it will provide a little bit more privacy to the vegetable garden for when we're working it. And uh, our neighbors are out using their fire pit. So we're excited about this. We've kind of measured everything out. This is going to be the biggest pinch point right here. Uh, but even if they do get that eight feet wide, they'll still have a decent walking space, both on this side and on the vegetable garden side. And eventually this deer fencing will be removed. It's just here while this plant was getting established. We honestly could remove it probably this year, but we're going to give it just one more year, especially so some of these lower branches don't get chewed off. And then we'll remove the fencing around it. So we put in these, measured it out, spaced it out, and put in these three uh, snow sticks so we could visualize it from a couple different areas. Now dad's removing the turf and then we're going to create the holes, putting most of the stuff here so we can move it easily. But before I get tucked into helping him, let me show you the spirea in question. The wind's not awful today, but it's probably a little louder than would be good. So I apologize if the audio is affected. I'll do my best to fix it in editing. But here are our spirea plants. There's three of them here and I think this one and this one are probably eight feet apart. This one is hard to tell right now but it's forward but they're probably only four feet and it's definitely the most stunted by this placement. So you can also see if you look closely they're just beginning to like put leaf buds on. So now is really the time to move these before they break down and see. So, um, I don't know where we talked about it. We're thinking we've got a plan on where they're gonna go in the holes once we get them out. Uh, when we get to that stage, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. But for now, I'm gonna go help dig holes. I'll set you guys up so you can see the process. Hopefully it's not as backbreaking that I'm thinking it might be. So that came out really easily. They've got very fibrous roots, so we were a little concerned about how hard it would be. We had filled this hole and it hasn't drained well, so we're just gonna put this on the side, go get the others, and then plant this later.
guys, it is a new day. Actually, in fact, it's a new week. I thought I would come and film an ending to this video where we moved the Bride of Elspiria. I apologize if the audio is bad. There's actually a lot of wind happening right now, but most of it's coming through the north, which is the like wood side of our property. So you might hear a little bit of background, but hopefully it's not as blowy as it normally is. Um, anyway, we worked on this project for about a day and a half and it took a lot longer than I thought. I don't know about you guys, but when we do some of those first big projects of the year, there's always unexpected things that you've run into. Like for us, it was, oh, we needed water, which we normally would get from the boathouse, but the water hadn't been turned on to the boathouse for the season yet. So we had to go upstairs, go all the way up and turn it on. Then we realized a breaker had been hit. So we had to go all the way back and turn it on. And then we had to gather things. the entire time so the last video you saw was us just kind of getting it down to where it was going and that being it because we hadn't dug the hole uh, and it was cold so my dad actually finished it because I had to go back home that day uh, and he finished it over the week and I thought I would show you what they look like and explain a couple things that we did along the way in case you were interested in moving larger shrubs at this time of year Spring is a great time to transplant shrubs, especially if they have not yet started breaking dormancy. If you're moving things later in the summer when they have their full leaf canopy, those are things that the shrub's going to have to maintain, which puts a lot more tax on the root system. When you're able to do it before the shrub, you know, puts out its leaves for the year and before it's really woken up, while there is root activity, it is not as bad and it can wake up in place. So that's what we wanted to do is make sure we got these before the buds started. I know I showed you at the beginning of the video, the buds in a minute, I'll show you that you can probably see a little bit. They've already started waking up a little bit more. I'll show you up close what they look like. So we got these at the perfect time. One thing I did want to explain, uh, when we were doing these shrubs, two of them could be considered full grown. We used a series of bungee cords to wrap them up to make it easier to move. These are pretty brittle, so we did lose a couple of stems here and there, but for us it made it a lot more manageable. And we were fortunate to be able to use our four-wheeler to kind of move them around. Though, I think I probably cut <laughs> bits of this. Our four-wheeler has this uh, gorilla cart trailer that we have that you know can tip which made it really really nice however two of the root balls were so heavy we had to heavy duty tie the releasing mechanism down because a couple of bumps meant that it went uh and yeah so that was quite hard and, and i don't think you could really see but the last one i actually had to hold it down the entire time we drove it back so these got in really well one of the things we did uh, because we know that these plants are larger and they might not take as easily to transplanting as a younger plant is we prepared the holes and filled them with water before we even brought the plant in. Some of which you saw, some of which you didn't. We filled it all the way with water, let it drain, and then filled it again so the area all around it was really saturated. Our soil here in particular is very sandy, which these will be okay with, but instead of putting the native soil back in, we did go ahead and add like a tree and shrub mix right at the root ball as well. In addition to giving them all some biotone starter fertilizer to help that root stimulation get going. When we were actually putting them in the hole, the other thing that we did is we looked at it before we bungeed it and marked what side we wanted where. And then we bungeed it so with, and we knew that that flag needed to align with a different point and a, refer a different reference point so that we could get it basically in the right spot. The other thing we did when we introduced that water in the hole and the, the soil we added to make a slurry really helped us make sure that we were seeding that root ball in securely and there wasn't any air around it. We find that, especially with larger shrubs, that makes it easier to ensure you're not getting air pockets. That root ball is immediately, you know, given moisture, which is what they want. Uh, and we also made sure to pop the, uh, pop the biotone starter fertilizer in there too. So those are a couple things that I knew I wanted to make note of and explain what we're doing. You might've seen me in one video <laughs> stomping around on the ground. Our shore stations for our sea dews were stored here. We had to move them to make room for things. And they had been covered with zebra mussels, which are um, an invasive species, non-native, uh, but they're in a lot of Michigan waterways. And over the winter, they like fall and die. And they actually are really great fertilizer. So as breaking them up. <laughs> 
so that they would be absorbed a little bit more in case you were wondering what the heck I was doing stomping in a pattern. But that odd behavior aside, let's take a look at these bridal veil spirea. Okay, here we go with them all in a line. Now you saw these two planted, and this is the really big one that we moved at the end that my dad planted on his own, and they went in really, really well. The other thing that's nice about the uh, soil water method we do is it really helped us make sure that we were getting the plant in upright. But we ended up having to do for some of them was I had to hold it and my dad was shoving slurry under different points to make sure that it would stay upright. And for the most part, it helped kind of cement them in since we do get wind to help them, you know, give something solid to hold on to. So they're not rocked in the wind before they can establish their roots. Uh, and as I said, you can see that the leaves have already progressed a little bit more. They're starting to kind of come out. And this had some dead in it in general that we're not going to cut out until it's a little bit further along. But I think that they took so well. Now, when if you remember where these were, all the way up there and we'll go look at that before the end of the video this one was in the middle and was the oddest shape and then this one was on the right side closest to the property line and this one was the best looking one closest to the walkway in the middle as i'm showing it to you right now this isn't a view a ton of people will see but we made sure to put sides that needed a little bit more shaping in deliberate areas because the path of the sun kind of goes from over here uh, up over and then sets over there. So this side of the plants are the north side and will not really get a ton of sun. So we try to put nicer sh shaped sides toward the north knowing they might not put as much active growth on there. We also tried to make considerate of what the view from our neighbor side looks like and it's kind of hard for me to show you but in general, it also looks attractive from their side. Where there's a couple flat areas, we were very deliberate in where we put them. And this right here is a great example. We put this flat area right here because this is southern exposure. It's gonna get the most sun. So this is naturally where the growth will be. And especially since the north side is the side we see from our deck, we wanted to make sure it was pretty as was this vantage point. So in general, they're actually looking a lot better than I thought they would. Like in terms of the shape, they're not super misshapen. And we didn't lose a ton of uh, broken branches. You can see there might be a spot like here or there where we did once we broke something, come in and give it a nice clean cut. But they're gonna be so beautiful here. I can't wait to see them flower. And I think they took really, really well. We've been making sure to give them water as needed, though it has been quite damp. It's actually rained the last two days, and there's a break in the rain that we're going to come out, do a couple more projects that you'll see soon, and then um, we just don't water them quite as much when that happens. But now I'm looking at the bed that they used to be in, and it honestly changed this view, um, which I knew it would because they were quite large shrubs. Uh, it's opened up the area near the house in a way that's really, really pretty. And we're going to make sure that we kind of preserve the openness as we plant this space out. Here is the view of the bed from down below where they used to be. I actually got in there and weeded a bit. I think I only made it to about here um, while I was waiting for various things to happen. And, and fun fact, I mentioned earlier, like the things you don't realize, you don't know where they are because it's the first project of the year. We discovered when we were doing this that there are a lot of stuff like tools that had migrated to my new house while we were working on projects that didn't quite make it back to the cottage. So things took just a long time and I was able to get in here and weed. Uh, and I'm gonna hopefully finish up this bed soon because there's a couple other things we wanna move around in it. You can see where they were, we haven't, we filled it roughly, but we need to come in with a little bit more and level it out. I think this open space is gonna be perfect. This year we're gonna be probably not plant anything in it as we kind of think on it over the year and see what kind of interests we want to add in here and we'll probably use it for mostly dahlias this year. Um, so it's filled and being beautiful, but also um, gives us time to think about it a little bit more. But I, I, as you can imagine, it gives you like just such a beautiful view of this bed down here. Let me pop up. Look at this bed from above. 
The other thing that this really does is allow you to see the lilac tree bed in a way that we weren't seeing before. Those spiders are probably five feet high and they did create this like path that was really pretty and like a kind of secret hidden path. But now it doesn't need to be hidden. And I think that's something we're gonna maintain while we might plant one shrub that gets sizable. We're not gonna put anything that gets nearly as big in that area. Oh, and you can also see how pretty that little row looks down there as well. So that really wraps up this project. I'm sorry I couldn't show you getting that last spirea in place, but when I say it was miserable, it was it was quite miserable. It was probably about 38 degrees and raining and we were cold and my dad was able to finish it on a much more pleasant day. It's a little cold right now, but we're gonna push forward. If you're a gardener in the Midwest, you really don't have another, any other choice than to take advantage of the sun when it is shining. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe because you won't want to miss it. We're gonna be starting to post our videos a little more than once a week uh, during this busy time. As I'm able to edit them, you'll get to see them. I think the next video you see will probably be Monday we're going to be making it back to the home garden where I will be unearthing my winter storage pots so we can see how they fared this winter and start getting the home garden ready for some of the projects we have coming up this year. I really appreciate you joining me in this video and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.